happens. The heart has its own intrinsic nervous system, which can sense, feel, remember, and process information that's independent from the brain. We always think of the information input system as being entirely in the brain. But we're now discovering information that the heart receives information first and then relays it to the brain. Studies have shown that the heart responds faster than the brain to outside stimulation. One of the more recent studies we did in our labs was looking at the what we ended up titling the electrophysiology of intuition. And there was some uh, previous research that had been done showing that the body would respond in a way that would predict a future event if the future event was emotionally significant and relevant to the person. Participants were attached to sensors to record their brainwave activity, heart activity, and heart-brain interactions. A person would be sitting in a computer, push a button, and then we're recording physiological data and six, eight seconds later you would be shown a, a photograph. Okay, and then the photograph would be from two opposite ends of the spectrum of emotional arousal. Participants were shown pictures of car accident victims, snakes attacking, and other disturbing images. On the other end of the spectrum, the pictures included flowers or sunsets. The photographs were randomly assigned for display to the participants. What's key here is the computer assigned not only which photograph, but which type of photograph after the data was already recorded. So it was absolutely impossible for the research subject, the experimenter, to have any kind of foreknowledge of what photograph it might be. The computer itself didn't even know. The results were surprising. The body responded even before the picture was displayed. What we found was that not only did the body indeed respond prior to the event, you know, the seeing the picture, in a, in a way that would predict it, but it was the heart that responded first. The heart's response was not only faster, but the signal it sent to the brain varied depending on the emotional content of the picture. Looking at the signals that the heart was sending to the brain, that the heart literally sent a different message to the brain, depending on what the future picture was going to be. Then you saw a brain response, then you saw the body response, which is where it then became conscious. So the flow of this uh, what, intuitive information is heart, brain, body, and then you have to have the body response for it to become consciously aware of it. What these experiments reveal is changing our basic understanding of how the human body functions. It appears as though the heart and brain, later, have access to a field of information not bound by time and space. If we're talking kind of quantum holographics or quantum physics, that's old news. So we're really starting to have ways now of showing that we really do have a, an energetic or an electronic system. And um, that that's really primary, that it's certainly not bound by time and space. The heart is connected to a field of information and intelligence that's different but complementary to the field of the brain. It's very clear these neurons in the heart and the brain part have short and long-term memory. They process information. It's a functional brain. Other researchers theorize that the heart may be the master organ for imprinting information into the body field. There's a lot of neural tissue in the heart. And we believe that neural tissue is there in order to act as an imprinter for the hologram. The body's holographic body field is continually supplied with information via the pressure waves of the heart. Inside the heart there is an enormous amount of charge. Now the pressure waves in the presence of this charge inside the chamber of the heart is sufficient to imprint information. If the heart is transmitting or imprinting information, there must be a way for the cells in the body to receive that information. There are receptor protein cells on the outside of the cell which are simply there to, re to receive environmental information. How is my day today? What is going on out there? What does the body want this little cell to do today? You see what I mean? There has to be uh, intercellular communication, but there has to be one source so there can be one control system for the body.
This control system is sending out information to the body via the body field. But what exactly is information? If we think of the body as uh, a, a both a material and an energetic, dynamically exchanging open system, which it is. We need to eat like a ton of food a year and most of it is passed out. So uh, it, all of that food is somehow turned into the body, which remains extremely stable for long periods of time. Somebody basically doesn't change much for maybe 40 years as an adult. People recognize you immediately, even 40 years later, because the basic body structure doesn't change, even though after a short period of time, you don't have a single atom left in your body. They've all exchanged and, and gone out. And, and so now this is, this is the hamburger I ate yesterday, and you know, in three weeks from now, this will be a carrot that I eat tomorrow, and so on. It, it's a very dynamic system, and yet I remain the same. So if it's not the material, and presumably not the energetic part, the dynamic energetic part, then what's left? There must be something like an informational pattern which holds it together. Many scientists who are on the frontier theorize that and have demonstrated that we're an information system and it's not entirely localized in our body, that we're accessing information from the field all the time. The body appears to be constantly connecting with information within itself and with information in the field. The body is always looking for coherent systems, looking for information interchange between all cells he has, so that every single cell knows what's on. It's a large information system, and uh, some people say that illness is just a lack in the information system, and I suppose they are right. Matter is compressed energy. Information is patterns of energy. There's an information flow in our bodies that we still don't completely understand through our nervous system and through the tissues and even the ancients, some of the ancients and the Chinese call it the acupuncture system which is a system of information flow in the body itself. We get a system when we get structure. You know there's information everywhere isn't there? But you only get an information system when it's ordered and the great thing that was discovered in the 1980s was that the acupuncture system appears to be an organized system. It's not just a random group of acupuncture meridians. It looked uh, upon doing experiments that they wanted to arrange themselves in a certain order and that they wanted to communicate with each other in a certain direction. So we're saying that information has order, and that's what makes the body feel, is the order itself. The actual regulation of the whole organism and of all cells, the coordination of all cells, is accomplished with the help of these information fields, these scalar wave fields. They guarantee that each cell knows what every other cell is doing at any given time, and we have over 70 trillion cells. This is a lot of information and it can only be processed with the help of these structured fields. Ultimately, according to Einstein and other people more recently, have said that energy and information must be interchangeable. All right. So information becomes a type of energy because it's, a, it's an orderliness in space. All right. So they are interchangeable, but on the other hand, in practice what happens is you get a wave of energy and then upon that wave you can get imprinted information. And the amount of information you can imprint appears to be limitless. Informational medicine, medicine that takes information and changes disturbed information is going to be the future of medicine. Apparently, the control system of the body is not genes or chemistry, but information, which seems to be available in the body field. Is it possible to put new information into the body to affect wellness? That is exactly what a number of researchers are doing. That we've learned how to stop the distortion of information that occurs as a result of various disease processes. Once you stop the distortion, Surprisingly enough, the physiology begins to work, the chemistry comes right. There are really wonderful healing stories to be told here. And it's simply because we've learned how to correct the distortion of information in your body field. Disease 
is in a sense scrambled information. And so if we can access the appropriate information, we correct the scrambling. And that's what a number of, of these new energy modalities are doing. They're basically correcting that information scrambling. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer when I was 20, which resulted in having to have surgery and they removed all but a fourth of my thyroid gland. I've had to take a uh, synthetic hormone to give me the thyroid hormone that I needed ever since. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome some years later and fibromyalgia some years later, which, you know, I just continued to get sicker and sicker. My husband had to pick me up out of the bed if I had to get up. He had to feed me, set me up in the bed and feed me. It, it got really bad to the point is where um, pretty much so bathed her and carry her from the bed to the bathroom and things of this nature just to just to, for her to survive on a daily basis. They really um, didn't know what to do for that type of, of illness. I was pretty much told that you just kind of had to live with it. I couldn't help her, you know, and no matter what she told me, what hurt or what felt bad or what was happening, I couldn't help her and neither could anybody else, we didn't think. My doctor finally said, Vanessa, you know, I really don't know what to do for you at this point. All I can do is try to give you medicines to make you more comfortable. But I would suggest that you um, go see this nutritionist and maybe she could help you figure out what you can eat or at least, you know, you can start to get some nutrients from something. Vanessa actually was referred to me by her endocrinologist. When she first came to me, she was literally not able to spend a day at all out of the bed. Uh, she had lost a tremendous amount of weight. She was allergic to almost everything. I was having a lot of trouble finding any foods that I could eat at all which really resulted in me being so weak. The inside of her mouth was had a lot of sores inside of it. The uh, lips had uh, multiple sores on them, like a cold sore type thing. And her hair was like straw and coming out. The first thing I did was the nest testing. The system is designed to determine areas of distortion in the body field. New information is made available to the body by ingesting drops that have been imprinted with an information pattern. I started her out at the dosing that we would have addressed a child because her energy fields were that weak. So we uh, started out very, very cautiously. One morning I woke up after I had been seeing uh, Deborah probably for a couple months and I just had this feeling that I hadn't ever had and I knew I knew that that this was the answer and I felt so good that I just cried I just sat up in the middle of my bed and I just cried and cried and cried in about six months she reached an energy level of where the body was beginning to transfer message more effectively.